As we all know, obesity is a chronic, multifactorial, and morbid disease that affects almost 70% of adults in the United States, and it has many different problems. In the most recent years, there has been a lot of attention to obesity because of the new medications that have been approved, semaglutide and terceptide. Hello, my name is Andres Acosta. I'm an associate professor of medicine and consultant in gastroenterology at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I'm an obesity expert. And today I'll be delighted to talk about our uh, recent paper that we published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, Obesity, a Review of the Pathophysiology and Classification. But so we thought it was timely and appropriate to review uh, the literature about the pathophysiology and classifications of obesity for all of us who are seeing patients with obesity to understand a little bit more the context of this disease, as well as uh, put it on the context of the management that we were talking a lot lately with all these different uh, medications that are either approved or ready for the management of obesity or in the pipeline to be approved. So for that reason, in this review, we like to uh, highlight first the definition of obesity, that so many people think that obesity is a disease and we define obesity by body mass index. But in reality, the disease of obesity is not defined by body mass index, but the definition of obesity is when the excess of adiposity increases the health risk. That's what the World Health Organization tells about obesity. Then once we define the, the disease of obesity, we also do a very brief summary on what are the comorbidities associated with obesity, and then we do a deep dive into the pathophysiology and classifications of obesity. In order to do this deep dive into the pathophysiology and classifications for obesity, what we have done is a comprehensive literature review in publications that were in English um, using different terms. The key thing is that we want to highlight that obesity from our review is an energy balance disease. We need to be on energy homeostasis in which intake and expenditure needs to be on a balance. When that balance gets lost because of many reasons that are driving it as either to eat more or burn less, we start gaining weight and storing that excess of calories in the form of fat. So we first cover the energy regulation all the way from the genetics, the regulation of food intake, how the environment is affecting our energy balance, how are the key components that regulate our energy balance, not only from the intake side between our gut, adipose tissue, and our brain, but also we cover the other side of the question, which is the resting energy expend the expenditure side, sorry, including the resting energy expenditure, the physical activity, and exercise. We try to do a very comprehensive analysis of all these things that matter in the path of regulation of food intake, including also a significant emphasis on the stomach and hormones that play a major role in the regulation of food intake, and as well as are targeted for therapies such as um, enteric hormones, such as uh, the GLP-1 hormones, or, or the uh, GIP hormones that are now uh, target for treatments, as well as treatments for bariatric surgery and bariatric endoscopic procedures. I think it's important that then we do a deep dive into the central regulation of how the brain regulates appetite and appetite regulation. And in, if any of these pathways in the brain are not working appropriately because of there's a genetic mutation or there's something that has affected that area of the brain, it will tend to drive us to overeat gain weight, and then develop obesity. Subsequently, we do a different take into looking at to why obesity then becomes into a risk factor for many other diseases. And now that we understand that you might gain weight because of many reasons, we need to understand that then that excess of calories will produce a local and systemic inflammation that will drive insulin resistance, lipid accumulation, cellular metabolic dysfunctions that will release inflammatory adipokines, produce inflammation, and then eventually that inflammation will continue into this vicious cycle, as we explain in our figure uh, two, that's showing that that is what drives these patients to uh, eventually develop type two diabetes, heart disease, and many types of cancers. Now, not everyone with, with obesity have inflammation at a certain point, 
but they are a high risk of developing these inflammatory reactions and then develop um, uh, um, this adiposity toxicity and then develop, develop inflammation that leads to other diseases. And finally, we do a, a more uh, evaluation of how obesity has been classified into different ways to look at obesity. The most common one, as I said at the beginning, is using the body mass index, in which we define normal weight from a BMI from 18 to 25, overweight from a 25 to 30, BMI from 30 or above is obesity, with BMI class 1 between a BMI of 30 to 35, class 2 between 35 to 40, and BMI uh, class 3, which was a BMI, or sorry, obesity class 3, which is a BMI of greater than 40. We also introduce terms that are beyond BMI, such as waist circumference, and then we try to explain in this review the terms about metabolically healthy and unhealthy obesity. Those who have um, metabolically unhealthy status of obesity are the ones who have a higher risk of developing insulin resistance or who already have insulin resistance, inflammation, metabolic disease, and cardiovascular disease. And taking those classifications, we also move towards highlighting the classification uh, and the concept of the Edmonton obesity staging systems, which tell us the disease might have different stages of the comorbidities at different levels, both at a biological level, at a physiological level, and a, as well as um, a psychological level. So those are different ways of uh, addressing uh, obesity, and we highlight these things. And finally, we cover a work that we've been doing in the space of obesity, which talks about obesity phenotypes and how we've been classificating obesity based on the unique pathophysiological characteristics of patients with obesity. And based on that classification, how we have shown in different randomized trials, as well as real world studies, the um, outcomes of how we can improve outcomes in a phenotype based classifications. With that, I would like to invite all of you to read our review paper in Mayo Clinic Proceedings, and feel free to reach out if you have any questions or comments regarding our manuscript. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.